Hello world, today we're going to insert crypto data into our Postgres database using SQL Alchemy. We're going to use the free crypto data that we got from Kaggle. I think we created that data set in about two, about two episodes ago. And we're going to use the database that we created in the last video that we're going to use for future crypto stocks, futures, and forex algo trading purposes. So with that being said, let's dig into it. <laughs> Let's create some code. We'll start by opening up the Jupyter Notebook that we use whenever we got that free crypto data from Kaggle. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and you'll notice, you know, we're exporting out the minute bars as a CSV file. Well, we just want the minute bars because we're going to insert that into the database. So I'm going to delete that. But before I do, I'm going to make a copy of this. I'll insert data. I'll rename it whenever. Um, I upload it to GitHub. And now that we have a clone of that prior notebook, I'm going to delete this, create a new heading, let's call it insert data. And I'm going to run this and it's going to take a little bit of time. So through the magic of the internet, I will see you after this has been run. Now that we have the minute bar ready, let's think about what we need to do. Probably the easiest way to think about this is to look at this visually and look at the ERD. We have two tables that we need to populate. We have the symbol table, which again is that parent table, and then the child minute bar table. The minute bar is just the OHLCV data, and the symbol includes ticker, name, market, and active. So let's get the tickers, which will also be the name because the Kaggle data doesn't provide to a name, it just provides a ticker, and then whether or not uh, it's active, the market we know is crypto. So that's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do that now. So first we'll get all of the tickers. So tickers equals bars 1m. We'll grab the index and it's level 2. So we'll do get oh, level values of the index to level 1, I should say. And then unique. And then tickers. So this should give us a list of all of the tickers. Perfect. Now we have to decide what do we consider being active? I'll say that anything that we got in the last day, so if there's data for the, the prior day, we'll call this active. And we know that the last day was 1231. So we'll just say anything that we got from you know, 1230 and on will be considered active. So we'll do active tickers equals bars 1M. We'll use um, you know, slicing here, we'll do 12. 30. Okay, so that'll give us just the bars that start on the 30th. And then index, get level values, get level one again, and unique. The spell, unique. And then we'll do active stickers. We had 132 last time, and now we got 113. So it looks like there are some that are not active, or maybe they just have low volume, but for our purposes, this works. Okay, great. So the next thing that we need to do is create the data frame. And this is pretty easy. So actually, you know what? I'm going to create some column headings here, get symbols, and now let's create symbols data frame. Okay, and let's think about what we need to do here, right? Simply just populate these fields and IDs auto populated or auto generated. We'll do symbols equals PD data frame. And then we'll pass in the tickers, which are all of the tickers up here, right? And then we'll set the name equal to the ticker symbols name equal to symbols ticker. So essentially they're duplicated. Uh, obviously, if we had a more robust data source, we'd put in the name there. But again, we're working with free data. Free data. And then symbols market. This is an easy one. We'll just pass it the crypto strings here, YPTO. And now whether or not it's active, the symbols active, and we'll just use np.where. So np.where, pass it the condition. So symbols, ticker is in, and then we pass it the active ticker list, active tickers. 
And then if it is found, we'll pass true. So it's active would be true. Otherwise it's false. And now let's sort uh, by ticker in alphabetical order. So symbols equals symbols dot sort values by ticker. Then we will output to see how we did. Any typos? Nope. All right, so here are our tickers, right? Pretty easy. So the next thing we need to do now that we have our uh, symbol data frame again right here is to get the minute bar data frame. And the only thing that's you know re even remotely complex here is to link the ID, well, have a relationship from minute bar to symbol. And we'll actually create a symbol ID field. I just use it a convention. Uh, so anytime there's an ID, I just name it the symbol underscore ID. So I understand that's the case. So really this ID, you know, it's a, it's a many to one relationship. So that's actually a different field, if that makes sense. But you'll see what I mean in a split second. So let's create that title. Create minute bar data frame. Guess I'm being extra particular here, but that's how Pandas has it. Perfect. Now we'll just grab those minute bars, but we need to uh, order them differently because think about the data right now. It's by date. We want it by ticker and then by date because we're going to insert by as you know by ticker and not by date if that makes sense. So minute bars equals bars one m. We reset the index. We then sort values by pass it the list ticker and then date and then set <coughs> index ticker date and then let's make sure we got what we think we have or we should have it'd be uh, by an alphabetical order by ticker and then by date okay and this looks good perfect so now what we need to do is we need to insert the data. Okay, so we'll create another column heading here. Insert data. And let's go ahead and use some of the code that we created previously from PSQL import DB and session. This is so we can create a session to our Postgres database. But again, we're using SQL Alchemy, so you theoretically could be using any database of your choice. And then we also need to grab the model classes, which, you know, again, that's these right here. So we'll do from models, import symbol, and minute bar. Okay. And now let's go ahead and think about what we need to do, right? So what we want to do is we want to loop through every symbol create the symbol record, right? That's that parent table record. And then we want to link up the minute bar data, which is that child table data to that parent record. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just loop through every ticker, create the symbol, and then link the symbol to the minute bar. Hopefully that makes sense, but I'm sure we'll even more once we write the code. So for I, R, so that's the index, and then the R is for the row in symbols, but it arose. So we're just going to iterate through all of the rows. A symbol equals symbol. So we pass it that symbol class ticker, and then for each row, we just essentially populate all of the fields, right? So ticker, we've got name, so we'll just pass it the name. You've got market. market and then our active boolean active active perfect so then once we create the symbol we add it to the session so this adds it to the uh, sq alchemy session and now we need to commit this right because if we don't commit this to uh you know the database it won't have an id for us to link to so we'll do session dot commit and now that we have the ability to reference our symbol with its ID, 
we now can add the minute bar data. So we'll do bars equal minute bars. We'll take a cross section or XS. We're going to take a cross section by grabbing the ticker. So we'll do R ticker. So then that will give us, um, the, you know, so let's say we take our first one would be ADA, uh, ADA USD. You know, essentially we remove this and then our new cross section would be the uh, date as the index and then the open, high, low, close volume data. So go ahead and get that. And we'll want to reset the index because we want to be able to get date. We don't want it as the index. Okay, and then we can do this. This is the magic. So bars symbol ID is equal to symbol ID, right? Because we committed this to the database and so now we can reference that ID. And now we're going to do a bulk insert. We don't want to iterate through each one of these. That would each minute bar row. We can do a bulk insert, which is a, uh, a lot faster. It does bypass certain things, but we're not using that using that in this instance for certain features or functionality. It's bulk insert mappings. And we pass it the class, which is minute bar. And then we'll do bars. We want to change that to a dictionary. We orient that by records. So we're just taking um, the uh, the bars data frame, making it into a dictionary, essentially uh, a row by rows, and then we can just imp import that. So then we'll do session dot commit. I'll switch over to the terminal so we can see uh, the data being populated. We we'll select star from symbol. Let's see a few in there, perfect. And let's make sure that those minute bars exist. So we'll do select symbol.ticker. So we'll grab the ticker from the symbol table. And then we'll do minute bar dot star to get all of the fields in the minute bar. From symbol join minute bar on symbol ID is equal to minute bar dot symbol ID where Symbol dot ticker is equal to ADA USD. Hit enter. And now we have our minute bar and it's obviously associated with our ticker. See, that wasn't so bad. We now have a Postgres database with crypto data in it. Now all we need to do is figure out how to get that data out to be able to start back testing. Now you can probably guess what the subject of our next video is. So if you cl click right here, you'll be taken to the next video, which actually shows you how to get that data out of Postgres. Thank you and I hope to see you there. Oh, and if you don't mind, hit the subscribe button if you like these videos too. All right, thanks and see you soon.